We found that we could tell whether a person has autism or not by the way their brain activates when they think about social concepts. And the way this magic has been made possible is because we can read people's minds from their brain activation. We can tell whether someone's thinking about a banana or a chair or a hammer because everyone has the same pattern for this, for a given concept. And so we made use of this discovery that there are common activation patterns that identify thoughts to study the thoughts of people who have altered representations. And in autism, the social processing is altered. People with autism think about social concepts differently, behave differently in social situations. And that must mean that their minds are representing these social concepts in a different way. Now we have this technique to identify the social concepts and to see whether they differ in various psychiatric illnesses. And we're able to find that, in fact, in autism, there is a clear difference in the way social concepts are represented. We studied a number of social concepts, such as uh, to persuade someone or to be persuaded, to hug someone, to adore someone, to hate someone, and so on. Neurotypical participants in our study, when they thought about these concepts, they themselves were part of it. The part of the brain that represents oneself, the self, was in it. When they thought about hugging or being hugged, they were in it. They were one of the people involved in the hug. When you had people with autism think about hugging or persuading or adoring or hating, they weren't in it. It was like as though they were thinking about it like a dictionary definition without self-involvement. So it's a, uh, a non-involvement in social concepts. And this was enough to tell us whether a person was auti had autism or not. We could identify something like, with something like 97% accuracy, whether someone had autism or not, using, uh, comparing our method to the gold stand current gold standard. It gives a whole new perspective on the understanding of psychiatric illnesses. This works out well, and this is just the first study, but if this works out well, I think that um, this will be a could be a tremendously useful diagnostic tool. Imagine not having to have a trained psychiatric worker do the assessment. Imagine having a quantitative measure of this, so being able to test lots of people. And imagine being able to test for more than one kind of psychiatric illness at a time. Imagine putting someone, it's like having a, a blood test that tests for many kinds of, of changes or alterations in the blood components. Here, this general approach, this is just the first step, but imagine someday where you ask people to think about a range of thoughts and you see which ones are distorted and you see which brain sub subsystem is affected. So this potentially could change the nature of psychiatric diagnosis, providing uh, a second way, a second important quantitative way to assess thought alterations.